It's really not that much time past that to interpret targets. We're planning to be drilling by the end of May or early June. Talking uranium here with Aero Energy and Galen hunting uranium out of the Athabasca Basin in Canada. Galen, Aero Energy hasn't been around for such a long time. You're quite new. Drilling season last year was very successful. Initial one, you had a successful funding. What's ahead in 2024 for investors? I think for us, you know, this company is actually a brand new uranium exploration name on the frontier northwestern margin of the Athabasca Basin basin where we know there's a lot of good sniffs in the area and a lot of great targets and none of them have been tested so for context that's in my opinion as a, as a geologist as well as the CEO a very rare and unique opportunity so we just finished raising 5.9 million dollars three weeks ago now give or take and we now have what is a war chest to just go out for this year and test 20 25 targets with drilling with the idea of really trying to look for a large basement hosted uranium deposit and I guess you already have some targets if I look at your website so I see 8.8% uranium. Perhaps you can quickly place that into a bit of context, what we're looking at percentages wise and what would be great results of the drilling season for investors at home. Yeah, for sure. So one of the interesting things on this project is that you can go to the project and right at surface sample 1, 2, 8, 20% U308. They were looked at decades ago. They're in what I would call the wrong rock, but it proves that there's a lot of uranium around and the quote unquote right rock are there. The right rocks to host big deposits are there and they haven't been explored seriously. So if we have all this uranium in the area, in the wrong rocks, the right rocks are there, they haven't been explored. And you know, for us, that's a compelling opportunity that we really want to test. So on the properties, there's a minimum of 50 targets to test. This summer, we're going to test you know, what we think are our top 20 or top 25. Um, and a good result, you know, I think would be multiple percent uranium over multiple meters. And Galen, could you add a bit more context for those people not familiar with the uranium space of wrong rocks versus right rocks? Yeah, so I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. The old showings and deposits that you know, we've known about in this area going back to about 1950, they're generally small except for a few exceptions. They're generally lower grade than what we're looking for today. You know, today we're in this area, we're looking for 1, 2, 5, 10% U308. These run 0.25 or something like that. And they're generally hosted in rocks that are just like granites. For all intents and purposes, let's just call them granites. That's great. They were there. They were good in the 50s when our governments really needed uranium at any grade and any cost. But today we look for rocks and we we just understand so much more now about how uranium deposits form, the earth processes that form these deposits. So what we look for now is rocks that have graphite in them, and they typically hold fault zones, but that graphite is a good chemical trap for trapping uranium that comes in hot water and hot fluids. And that's the deposit that we're looking for. Exciting. And you just now announced that you're doing an airborne BTM plus survey. So how is that getting you ready for drilling? Is that cutting edge technology? And what does it actually do? Yeah, so this is where it gets a little bit uh, a little bit into the weeds. And I'm going to put my pro propeller head hat on here to explain something to you as I hope that is simple as possible in that. So this BTEM survey that we're flying, it's a helicopter based survey that looks for those right rocks, that looks for those graphite rocks. Rocks. And if you can imagine a helicopter and it's got a, a long line underneath it that it tows and attached to this long line at the bottom of it is a giant gadget that looks just like a dream catcher and it might be 100 feet in diameter. Like so that device, it transmits electricity into the Earth's surface and into the crust. The way it, it comes back to the receiver, we're able to measure if there are conductive rocks below that survey. And and what's a great conductive rock? Graphite. It's a perfect conductor. And that's carbon. So we're able to see those graphites and those and that carbon. And that's the target that we're looking for. That's those are the right rocks I was talking about. So if we can identify those from just by flying a helicopter with a gadget chode underneath it, then we're almost direct detecting the target rocks that we're looking for. And there'll be a lot of them. We have to use our geological brains to figure out which ones are good and which ones are bad. It allows you to start drilling those targets right away and hopefully making a discovery. Galen, thanks to you, I now have an idea of what an airborne VTM looks like. So very cool. Is that cutting edge? Or is that industry standard right now? You know what? Different people do it different ways. But for us, you know, I've been working on and off in uranium exploration since about 2010. And surveys like this are just a fundamental process that represent the first steps in exploration. It's not something that would have ever been done, say, 15 years ago or before that. So when, like during the last phase of exploration in this area, anywhere from the 50s to the 80s, they didn't have this technology. You know, we have it today. Yeah, And I mean, given the current inflation, a rising cost of exploration, every meter you drill getting more expensive expensive you want to be absolutely spot on and try and be as efficient as possible so that's good news how long will it take 
to then work with the data from that Airborne VTM Plus survey? Yeah, so right now we're at the end of March. We expect to have the survey to be completed, say, by the end of April. Then it's really not that much time past that to interpret targets. We're planning to be drilling uh, by the end of May or early June on some of these targets that we already have, but maybe that we generate as well, or refine. You know, this will help us refine the targets that we have. Okay, and uh, cash-wise, you've just uh, closed the funding round. What's the burn rate uh, through 2024? Do we need another raise or what's your outlook? Well, you know what? So right now we're, we've got over $6 million in the bank. We raised that money so we could take shots at making a discovery, right? So whether or not we do more or don't, I think number one depends on market conditions because these are large properties that you know, I want to explore all of. Uh, and number two depends on results. So that's a little bit of a, of a way for me to not really directly answer your question but uh, that's on purpose a little bit so you know let's let's see how the next couple months go understandable galen good luck and looking forward to 2024 drilling season